According to NASA, the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere are higher than they've been at any time in the past 400,000 years. Scientists think one way of reducing levels is right under our noses. I'm Emma Keeling in Iceland, where they're taking carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and turning it into stone. Iceland is one of the most geothermically active countries in the world. All of its electricity comes from this renewable resource. The Hetlis Heavy power plant just outside of Reykjavik is one of the biggest in Europe. Steam is accessed from underground to create the power, but it brings CO2 with it. Dr. Edda Adodotis from Reykjavik Energy is the project manager of a joint venture called Carvfix, pioneering a process to capture that CO2. So we think of geothermal as, you know, all very natural, but actually it is emitting CO2, isn't it? This power plant, for example, only emits 3% of the CO2 coal burning power plant of the same size emits. Last year we captured and injected a third of the CO2 emissions from the power plant. So how do they capture CO2? Steam and hot water are pumped to the surface. To generate electricity, the steam drives the turbines and is then cooled and condensed. Gases like carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulphide from underground are pumped out of the turbine into the scrubber and showered with pure water. Here CO2 and other gases are dissolved and the non-water soluble gases are vented. Just like that? Just like that. It seems very simple. It is very simple. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost too simple. Well, I mean, the, very often the best solutions are the most simple ones, so yeah. The CO2 mixture is then piped over to the injection site. And are all these igloo-looking things, are they, are they all the injection sites, are they? Yeah, they're, it's, it's one of those is an injection well. A well, okay. A well, yeah. So this is the whole site, but those, these are all wells? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Why igloos? It's to protect the just equipment inside from the harsh weather yeah. during winter. And it looks good. It looks good, <laughs> yeah. This well is about two kilometres deep. Wow. Um, uh, it's closed off down to 700 meters, meaning that what we inject can only exit the well, go into the bedrock below that depth. And then uh, reactions that occur in nature between the rock and the dissolved gases turn the gases into stone. Nature plays a big part. Basalt rock is cooled lava and contains calcium, magnesium and iron, which reacts to the CO2 mixture, forming solid calcium carbonate in the rock's pores. So this is a core mm -hmm. we drilled into the storage formation a few years back. And then we have the white veins and spots in between, and that's mm -hmm. mineralized CO2. And it uh, turns out that what we inject is turned into rock like this in less than two years. So it's a very efficient and effective process, permanently getting rid of CO2. Iceland is now looking at applying this technology to heavy industrial plants and other CO2 emitting sources in the country. Wherever there is basalt rock, this process can work. It's the most common rock type on Earth, covering around 10% of continents, while most areas within the Earth's ocean basins are underlain by basalt. The storage capacity is huge. Professor Siggy Larsen is the co-founder of Carbfix. On a big scale, we looked at all of the oceanic ridges. Of course, it's probably not economically to do it, but you could take all the CO2 from burning of all fossil fuel that we know of on Earth, you could take that CO2 and you can store it into all of the oceanic ridges. There is enough storage capacity for it, but we will not do it. It's not economical to do it. You will find the solution closest to the source. For example, if you are burning here, you know, you have a coal-fired power plant here in Northern Europe, it might be best just to put it in the settlement near basins here close to Norway, a short distance for travel. 
One disadvantage is the amount of water needed for the process. It takes around 25 tonnes to convert one tonne of CO2. I mean, we don't have enough water, do we? Exactly, and that's why we are, you know, when we, when we take this and expand this all over the world, this method, you know, we're going to need something else. Therefore, we're going out to sea. There's infinite source of water on the coastline. But what's tricky with seawater, seawater contains dissolved sulfur and calcium to start with. And at high temperature, if you go much higher than 150, you know, this sulfur can steal the calcium away from the calcite that we want to form. So we are trying to define the temperature window, you know, where we can inject, and that means temperature window is actually how deep down in the earth can we put our injection wells, because it gets hotter and hotter as you go down. So these experiments will help us to define how we can play with seawater when we inject. This is, as we say, very hot stuff. <laughs> and, and it looks like, it looks like, I mean, it's, it's working very well. You're as very you busy. Well, well, yeah, we are all very busy, and we should all be very busy when we're trying to save the world. What we're doing is just a drop in the bucket. Presently, we are emitting about 40 gigatons per year of CO2. We have to be extremely focused to get going, to capture CO2 as fast as we can, and then later on, in the second half of the century, we have to clean it from air because we're not doing it fast enough. Carbfix is also collaborating with Swiss company Climeworks to capture CO2 directly from the air. The prototype unit at Hetlefady captures around 50 tonnes a year. Even here in Iceland, we might build power plants just to drive air cleaning systems. And that might be the, a great role where Carbfix could play in the future, simply cleaning the air for the better of mankind.